During World War II, there was a little-known branch of the United States Navy whose job it was to serve aboard merchant ships and protect them while delivering essential war supplies to the Allied fighting forces overseas. From 1942 until mid-1945, 710 ships were sunk beneath them. Yet few people ever heard of them. That's because no one bothered to fully document a record of their achievements. Now, after more than 50 years, their long-forgotten story can finally be told. This is the story of the United States Navy Armed Guard. An ally is in peril, and a lifeline is flung across the top of the world. It is the most expeditious way of feeding and battle Russia from democracy's arsenal. The shortest route. But for the pregnant ships, the grimmest, the harshest, the cruelest. At German air bases in Norway and Finland, detailed reports on convoy movements come in from long-range reconnaissance planes. The Nazis have a magnificently effective plan to change the color of the Arctic from white to red. How? Slaughter. 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 device to hide the convoy and confuse the attack. Any and all means of defense must be taken against the terror about to strike. High-level bombers and low-level bombers, torpedo planes and strafing planes, submarines, the entire holocaust of Nazi fury. some convoys, only one half of the ships survive. On no other sea route are losses so high, casualties so terrific. Even for those who survive the German onslaught, the end is not yet. Another ordeal, as fierce as enemy action, scourges the ships and men of the Murmansk run. The name of the ordeal, weather. ice-free harbor for many thousand tons of Allied supplies that sustain a friend, 
whose call for help we are pledged to answer. Here American, British, and Canadian seamen make their proudest boast. Despite Nazi hell and Arctic high water, we deliver the goods. The goods that bolster Russia in her darkest hour. Would you please state your name and where you live? Uh, Walt Devin Donis in Hoosick Falls, New York. I live, I live on 5 Carr Street. Have you lived here all your life? Or? I lived on, I was born on Clay Hill yeah. on uh, Wall Street back in 1923. I see. I, and that was, uh, well, uh, can't tell you anything else. That, uh, I have four brothers and three sisters. Well, I see. And you're, it's, before we get into yours, your brother's in the service too? Or? Oh, I, we had, uh, my mother had five people in the service. She, uh, At the she same time? A, she was a five-star mother. Mother, I right. see. Uh, tell us a little about Hoosick Falls just before you went into service, what you were doing and so forth. Well, at the... <laughs> Well, at the beginning, I went to the CC camp. This was back in 38, 39. And uh, that's the only jobs we could get at the time was during the Depression. And after that, I got out of the CC camp. I came back and got a little job at the Specialty Insulation Company at the time. And they, I, uh, then after that, I got a job. Oh, then I got a job down to the Arsenal. I went to work at the Arsenal for for nine months. Down at Waterfleet. Yeah, Waterfleet Arsenal. Uh, what happened there is the war broke out then, see? And uh, while well, working there, I couldn't work on a machine. I, I'm not that type of man to sit there and watch the machine go back and forth. Yeah. And I said, I, so, so one day, uh, another fellow and I, I forget his name, went down, all, went down all the to a Rio uh, to re-enlist, see, to enlist in the uh, Navy. And when they found out that we were working at the arsenal, oh no, you can't do that. We, you got to get a, 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 a deferment. A deferment. And uh, then uh, we went to uh, see General Gillips, Gillips, the, I think his name was. Uh, he was a general at that arsenal at the time. And he was disappointed. He said, no, I don't think I'm going to let you fellas go because you've been here nine months. We had to train you and everything else. And I said to Gillespie, I said, sir, I won't come to work. That's all I got to say. Either you sign that paper, and that's the way I put it. And uh, he sat there for a minute, and he stood up, and he shook my hand. He said, okay, Mr. Devin Donish, I'll let you go. Oh, I see. Good luck to you. And then you had the permission to join the Navy. Yeah, then they, then uh, I got in the Navy. Yeah. I see. All right, now tell us a little about that. Uh, how uh, how long between when you, Gillespie signed and how were you in the service? A week later, I was taken on a bus up to Sampson Naval yeah. Base. Uh, wow, they had yeah. the first F unit going at the time now. There were a lot of other units, but this was the first unit going. This was back in 42 now. I see. And... Uh, uh, let's see, as we only had six six weeks training up there. That's how, how they were pushing you out. I see. But then they transferred me down from there down to uh, Little Rock, Virginia for gunnery practice. You know, we never yeah. had a gun shooting right. gun up there. Right. And what happened there, I'll just put this hat. What happened there is uh, the office, one of the officers that wanted to know if I know anything about guns. And I says, oh, I worked in the arsenal down making big guns like that. Yeah. Oh, you did? He said, well, you ought to take a gunner's mate right, you know? So he gave me a book to study, nothing to it, a book, I mean, a first class, uh, third class gunner's mate. And right away, I got a gunner's mate right, uh, uh, third class gunner's mate. I see. Which you take care of one gun on a ship when you're, you know. I see, sure. So, so, but anyway, we got on the first ship I was on, they sent me down to New York. It was the SS Kentuckian. It was an old uh, ship made in uh, 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 somewhere in China, I guess. It was all riveted, and it was changed from coal to oil. 
And uh, a man uh, who lives in Hoosick Falls, well, he don't live in, he lives in uh, Buskirts. Uh, his name is uh, Lawrence Cassidy. Uh, we call him Hopalong Cassidy. I don't know. And uh, he was a, he was a merchant man at the time on the board the ship. And uh, he was one of the oilers, and I was a gunner. And uh, we got acquainted. And uh, and uh, well, I'll, I'll tell you that story in a minute. Uh, anyways, we left uh, New York and the convoy of 15 ships at that time. And about three days out of, well, let's see, uh, three, three or four days out of Nova Scotia, the, the ship behind us got hit by a torpedo way right on the stern of us. And all we know is the two ships on the front of us got hit. And I, know I could always remember the man on the bow, the gunner, gunner on the bow would say, he would, we'd have earphones on, and he'll say, Dave, he always called me Dave. I don't know why they called me Dave. Dave Adonis was an easy name, but yeah. Dave, and I said, what? And then he shut up for a minute, and he said, oh. He said, you know, we had a torpedo go by the bow just about 15 feet in front of that bow. <laughs> wow. That's bad news. Oh. Good news, it missed. <laughs> it missed. So this is the whole, uh, but, we got over, we lost four ships all together before we got over to Liverpool. That's where our destination goes. How old were you at this time? Uh, 20, let's see, 20, let's see, 21 or, no, not even, no, 19, sorry. Yeah, that's good, because if a young fella, 19, 19 going, yeah, yeah, 19. getting right into the thick of it. Yeah, and uh, anyways, then we come back to the States and uh, I lost uh, Hoppy. Hoppy got uh, wasn't on that ship anymore, and uh, I I stayed on that ship over a year. And then I got. What was the duty of the ship? Well, the duty of the ship is bringing cargo over to England uh, for the invasion. You know, I mean, they right. needed supplies. See? I see. So it was a supply ship. A supply ship. And yeah. you're going back and forth across yeah, the ocean. Yeah. Well, that that was one of the ships there. Now the next ship was the. Bernard and Baker, a uh, brand new, uh, I got a picture of it, if you want to see it. Yeah. Uh, can I show the Yeah, picture? sure, I'd be glad uh, to have it. It might come out on there. Oh, it'll come out. There it is. I can. Well, here's, a, here's that new ship that I was on, right here, if I can show you. Right yeah, I got a good picture. I just zoomed in on it. Okay. All right. All right. Now, this ship that I was on, it had more guns on it. Now, it had a big 5-inch 38 uh, stern gun, a 3-inch 50 bow, and uh, 820 millimeters. And I was, I took care of the 5-inch 38, which I was the gun captain. It, had, it took any aircraft for a surface gun. It was a, a 5 inches, a big gun. And uh, we made a trip uh, right, uh, let's see, this was back uh, early of 43, it was, and uh, we had to go to Scotland for some reason. Uh, we went from New York to Scotland. We lost two ships at that time coming across now again. And uh, yeah, these submarines, you can't shoot at a submarine because you can't see them. Yeah. You know, even a periscope, you shoot at periscopes and but uh, you look at you're shooting at a at a thing uh, a mile away, uh, which looked like a little well little fish pole more or less. See, right. and you can't hit that either. Uh, anyways, we were in Scotland, Lockyo, and we found out that we had, had to go up to Russia, make a mer on a merman's run, and that was a they always say that was a suicide run. Uh, I believe it too, because uh, ships that were a convoy that was earlier before we uh, the first convoy, uh, more or less, uh, they lost 15 ships out of 30, and they had, they had to turn back, and this is the other convoy that I got into now to go up there. <laughs> I see. And uh, it was in the fall of the year now, December. Well. 
It was December 24th where our 25th the Christmas came and everybody was supposed to have a good Christmas dinner, but the ship was, uh, were in such a storm sea that we couldn't have, they, well, they made sandwiches for us. Because on merchant ships they don't, it's not as heavy as a, as a big battleship where they could really have your dinners, you know. Yeah. Uh, so the next day, the 26th, at 9 o'clock in the morning, well, when we say 9 o'clock in the morning, uh, we lost the sun already, you know, going up north. Now, yeah. Geez, oh, yeah, the yeah. sun wasn't shining. It was uh, uh, yeah, a day, but it kind of a uh, really uh, well, a twilight day, you know what yeah. I mean? Sure. And the, <clears throat> now, here comes uh, Sparks, which is a Navy uh, signalman. He's always been getting in contact with us. He said, well, we're going to get in trouble. He said this. They heard that the Sean Horse, the battleship Sean Horse, and some destroyers are looking for this convoy. And if they ever get in our right, we're, we're done for. Oh, boy, that was, that was, that was the end of uh, uh, good news that you hear now. Uh, the first shell hit that the, well, I don't know if it was, what ship it was, a Sheffield uh, cruiser, a uh, British cruiser. We could hear an explosion and, uh, on the stern, of the stern of it. And the other gunner's mate said, hey, they're not dropping depth charge. I think that he got shelled. And it did, it was hit by the stern, but it couldn't do it. It, just, it didn't sink or anything, it was out of commission. And everybody had a scatter at that time. Just go every place you want to go because, uh, and then we were watching on the horizon. We looked up on the horizon. We could see star, star shells and shells bursting and all. You could hear, sometimes you could hear these shells, you know. And where they were falling, we didn't give a damn as long as we didn't hit the ship. So. 11 o'clock that afternoon, or, or at 11 o'clock, we got news that the Sean Horse got sunk. It, it, took, uh, it took 15 torpedoes to sink it. And 1,700 men on that ship lost their lives. And they only had four, no, six uh, survivors off that ship they picked up. But that, that isn't the whole story of, uh, of, the, of the battle. Now, we had to go between North Cape and uh, Bear Island, which is a 200-mile strip. I mean, North Cape, and they were uh, controlled by the German Air Force now. Now you got to go, go between them. And, uh, boy, that was a rough. Them uh, planes come in. Well, we knocked two down. I mean, not our, uh, we can't say I, we knocked them down, but the ships knocked them down, okay? Yeah. Everybody's firing, you say, yeah. oh, I knocked them down. No, you didn't. Yeah. But uh, we knocked two, and the destroyers that we had around us, they knocked a few more down. And finally we got into Murmans. We stayed there from uh, New Year, no, five, uh, uh, I think it was January 5th when we got there. We went down the river, and uh, by the way, our deck cargo was two locomotives in the, on, the, on the bow and two PT boats on the stern, and the holes were all filled with canned goods, uh, Russian, you know, uh, for the Army. I see. Uh, uh, donated by the U.S., by the way. Uh, I'm trying to think of, of uh, we got into uh, near the dock area, they took took the uh, locomotives off, the PT boats off before we got to the dock area. And it took only four days before they cleaned us out, you know, and, I, and then they pushed us out in the river, you know, where we had anchorage. Now the river wasn't frozen over yet. Uh, and then we went through 
the first air raid we went through there was they were trying to hit the dock areas. They weren't hit, trying to hit the ships at all because uh, oh, if, the, if the ship was in dock, they would try to hit it. But most of the ships were out in the, out in the center. Uh, we went through 11 air raids that I know of in the la in one month's time. And uh, February came, it was, my birthday is on the 3rd of February anyway, and uh, you see, the temperature was 52 below zero. It was one of the coldest winters they had, and, and imagine, oh, it's always the uh, coldest winters they have yeah. when I'm there, all yeah, right? right. <laughs> and uh, that wasn't that bad, 52, but when it got to 60, 60, Below 61 below for a week. This How do you go out with 60 below you? We face had, would. Oh, we had these face masks we put on. You know, you had holes in it and then yeah. like that. You're well, you're waiting to get go back. Uh, they were just holding you there. Yeah, that's uh, we were just holding us there. We right. couldn't do it. Well, we we had the liberty, uh, if they call. We could walk. Well, now the ice comes in. Yeah, nice. it must have froze up. Yeah, well, it was froze up, but uh, they kept. They kept the uh, thing open because they dynamite these uh, Russian with dynamite to make sure the ship don't freeze in completely, you know. And then your ship is moving once in a while. You can't use up all your oil, you know, but yeah, you've right. got to have the oil to keep the heaters going and have boilers. And uh, so, how long did you stay in there until three, the three months? I, three I months. went out. Of, we got out of there. Let's see, uh, April. Uh, we started out there in March, the end of March. And with icebreakers coming in, you know, we were really, yeah. and uh, well, we went to we went to the village quite often, or up in Mermans quite often since we were there to uh, have a few drinks. That they had a place for the merchant marine and the navy, see. Yeah. And then on the way down, being empty. Oh, before we before we go down now, these uh, this. One air raid we had, with, uh, one air raid, the planes that came across our ship was so low that you could see the, you could see the swastika on it. You could it. actually see Yeah, it. you could see the swastika. But, I mean, we couldn't shoot because we're not ordered to shoot when, when we're uh, that way because on the hills that we were like involved in kind of a hill where the gun replacements up there, and that, if you're shot, you're probably to hit the Russians, which were all right as far as I'm concerned. But, <laughs> but we not supposed to shoot. But boy, when they get by you, you can shoot. You know, shoot down and up. You can't shoot towards the hills. I see. So it's funny you can see though. You can even see the man in it. That's how how low That's they were. Cool. Yeah. But they they were more or less hitting the dock areas. Mm -hmm. See. And, Trying to get rid of the docks. The railroad tracks. See? Yeah. So anyway. So on the way back down, we lost two ships, empty ships. And now the, the uh, some Marines that figured, well, they might as well hit a ship and get it. that way that ship won't be loaded no more, right. right? Well, we got back to New York, and uh, I got a liberty to get, go home for a, a, a week. We got a little bit, so I come home for a week. Uh, and. Then I got back, then I had to go back down. And when I got back down, we found out we were going to go down into the Mediterranean somewhere, you know. And I said, well, that's all right. That would be a nice place to be. It's going to be a warm spot now, you know. Of course, it's getting sp spring and summer now. And uh, I, when I uh, found out on that ship, was loaded with nothing but 500-pound bombs and detonators. <laughs> the so, ship was loaded with them. Uh, yeah. Wow. It was a now we now it's an ammunition ship. Yeah. And uh, and uh, uh, Barnes no not Barnes, uh, he was on a, he was on a other ship with me. Uh, I forget the name of the other guy. He said, Geez, Dave, he says if I knew that, I would have asked for a transfer right away. I said, Gee, if I knew it too, I would have I said, What are we gonna do? He said, Well what are you gonna do? Nothing. We got to live with it. So on the way across, God help us. We didn't lose one ship on the way over. You know. Now this is getting in for uh, 43 now, where 
the detection of the uh, of submarines were easy to detect, and they were getting more of them now. And they had sub chasers. Yeah, and yeah, stuff. and and uh, well, we got in the uh, uh, Mediterranean, and we had to go all the ways up to Barry Italy. Now, Barry Italy is on on the Adriatic coast, going up, and. Uh, we weren't the only ship. There were about five other ships with us, and with, with a couple, four or five destroyers, you know, guarding them. And all, of, uh, and, and we had a hold up about two days before we got into uh, Barry Italy, because uh, the Germans' uh, uh, plane hit a, an ammunition ship up there and blew about three other ships apart and killed so many, uh, I don't know, I, I, I forgot how many men, maybe 1,200 all together on the dock and, uh, and on ships. And, uh, and we were carrying ammunition too. That's sure. So we had to get there and finally, we got there, we seen ships galore all smashed up all. And we, they made room for us in one spot to get the cargo off and boy, I was glad to see these <laughs> get, things get <laughs> off. Go, huh? <laughs> oh, well, not only that, after we were empty, then we sailed down down to uh, Oran, North Africa, and uh, I met uh, a gentleman from Music Falls. He's dead now. D. Pitt, remember D. Pitt? The yeah, lawyer? D. Pitt, the judge. Yeah, yeah judge. He, yeah. he. I met him in Oran, North Africa, yeah, but great. he didn't know me. I didn't know him. At the time, because he, 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 because I could tell you a little story on that. We're up at, on a, up on a hill there, and Mer and Oran, the four of four gunners were on a table, and there were officers over on on another table. And we were talking where we're from, you know. One guy said, "Where the hell is Usyk Falls?" You know. And I said, "Usyk Falls is straight on the Massachusetts Vermont border," you know. And this man stood up, he said, who's from Hoosick Falls? I said, I am. He come over, he said, what's your name? I told him, and he didn't know who I And he told me who he was. I says, uh, uh, I was on Clay Hill. He said, oh, he, do you know uh, Edmund Skripsky? I said, yes, I know him. He said, well, he said, him and I are going to be partners over there. I'm a lawyer, I'm going to be a lawyer there. And he said, I just moved into Hoosick Falls. Yeah, we might get together someday. That's great. Which we did anyways later on. We That's a wonderful there. story. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, well, anyways, then, keep talking. And then we had a, uh, get, uh, Moroccan troops. Moroccan troops. We had 250 Moroccan troops come aboard the ship. Of course, before they came across the ship, uh, on the ship, uh, the engineers came in and, Put a canopy over, you know. This wasn't a, a troop ship, but these, they were deck cargo now. They were, yeah. And we didn't know what was going on here. And then I, and then, then the holes were put on a lot of a lot of machinery in the holes and everything else before they got there. And, and where were you heading for? Uh, invasion of southern France there, Tropez oh, there, right there where, uh, and uh, when we got there. They, uh, before you get there, they uh, uh, there were convoys going over, and you find out the smoke screen. The planes were terrible in that area. You know, planes were uh, the dive bombers were hitting some of these ships coming in. You know, and the, the navy would put smoke screens, or you know, and yeah. half of them smoke screen guy you almost died. And, you know, the and smoke. smoke of. But it saved a lot of ships, though. So you went on landing there. No, yeah, about three days, three days after, uh, three days after uh, uh, the main main uh, invasion was, we got there, and uh, these barges would come out, and because we, we they didn't have any uh, place for us to go, and they would take the troops off uh, on these, uh, uh, well, not barges. Uh, Yep. Invasion boats. Invasion there. crafts, yeah, they call them with the thing. Then the, then the barges come out and pick the, up the machinery that we had. Oh, we had only uh, like bulldozers and, uh, and some other, just for the land.
clear the land out on that ship. I was glad to get out of there. And then we got back out of there, and, and uh, then we headed for back to the states again. And then we got uh, then I and then I got another ship, which is the Blue Licks. It was a tanker in Baltimore, Maryland. We had to go down after a brand new tanker, C2 tanker, and uh, it had it hold five million gallons. That's one one of the big tankers. Five million gallons of high octane gas, mm -hmm. and uh, on the way over to the uh, in the Pacific, we had uh, let's see, fourteen PT uh, P38 planes for deck cargo. That they were hatching. We made them made that plus one. the oil, huh? Plus the oil, and yes, we sir. had to go all the way by ourselves, all the way to the Philippine Islands, and uh, it took us 32 days to get there. Not, not well. We had a, we stopped at Anna Week Dock and some I don't know places like that, but it took us uh, uh, and all run by yourself. All of by yourself and zigzag, zigzag, zigzag. And finally, we unloaded the planes and and, and uh, some place off of uh, Tulla. I forget the name of it, the uh, island. Mm -hmm. And they took them off in barges. And, uh, and I got to recall. I recall about two days later, the whole. Squaggling of planes flew over just to salute that, and it was in the New York papers too. And I never got it. I never well, got to salute a, your yeah, ship for coming. Ship, yeah, for for bringing the, the planes over. Yeah, I see. All right, and then then we had to uh, go up near Okinawa somewhere near that, and the, because there were two aircraft carriers that needed gasoline because they needed uh, so yes, we had to refuel them and. Uh, they were nice. Four, we always had four big, big destroyers around us. Protect. Every time we went out off the side, protecting. But, oh, but when that them uh, uh, suicide planes won them for that week that came in, my God, they 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 sunk a lot of our ships. And of course, we knocked a lot of their planes down. But boy, Kamahazi they, or something they, they almost got us. Well, about three or four came in at us, but we got them because the destroyers told us not to shoot them plane unless they come through their our, their barrage. You know, after they yeah. shoot, then you start shooting. Then we, and we got them. And boy, I was glad to get that empty and get the hell out of there. Yeah. And, and then where'd you go? My God, you've been you've been all over. Now where did you go? Well, we would then yeah, we picked up another. Ship coming in with the refuel and took their cargo off, put on it. We had to Hi, stay. George. We stayed over there over six months there. Hi, I see. That's it. That's it. And then coming back to the states. I, I mean, you and the Navy with plus Merchant Marine. It was really were there Merchant Marine on those boats, or yeah, were they? Yeah, there yeah. was a combination of combination. Navy and Merchant. The Merchant Marine would run. The Merchant Marine would. <laughs> shh, shh. No, the merchant marine, uh, merchant marine would run the ship now, you know, I mean, they car like the uh, engineers and that, but they would have a Navy captain, uh, the, the, who would run the ship would be a Navy captain, believe it or not, it wouldn't be a merchant marine captain, and uh, we had uh, either 27 or, uh, 27 or 35 men, uh, gunners aboard them ships. And they'd be uh, on a tanker. They would be only about 40, 40 merchant marines. So that's the way it goes. All right. And then what did what happened then uh, after you, your Pacific tour? Well, after the Pacific tour, the uh, the war, uh, war was getting over with now. Uh, well, after they dropped the bomb, we found out that you know about uh, about two weeks, three weeks later, uh, when they surrendered, we started to get point system. Whoever had the point system could get home. Yeah. You know, and you should have had a lot of points. Well, I did. Then. I got. I got enough point. But uh, this guy, uh, uh, Gerard Barnes, he was the other gunner's mate. And he was married too, by the way. And he said, Dave. He said, Hey, can you take uh, my uh, my place 
And the guy, you know, I said, hey, I had enough of this. I'm going to get the hell out of here. Yeah, sure. So, 1945, I got out, see. See, so then you shipped home. Yeah, then I shipped home. All right, and then you got discharged and you came back to Hoosick Falls. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got I see, and would you tell us a little, after you came back to Hoosick Falls, just a little of the story of, we got your war story. How about that medal that you got? Oh. What about that? Will you tell us about yeah, that? Yeah, well, the medal I got from the old Russian government. After 50 years, now they, this is after after 50 years I got that. I see. You see. When did you get it then? Oh, about, uh, let's see, about four years ago. I see. Four years ago. And uh, they gave it to me. Yeah, why don't you hold it up and we can get to see it. Yeah, they gave it to me uh, uh, to, to the people who made the Merman's Run. Yeah. Well, and uh, I won't. Yeah, why don't you hold it up and I'll... Well, wait a minute, I put it like this. All right, I can get it. I think I can get a little closer if you hold it up a little. Oh, okay. Hold it down, hold it more this way so I can get a picture of it. All right? Yeah, there. There we got it. Okay, now I'll take it back. Okay, I got it. Now, they said up there they, uh, they wouldn't... No, the people up there thought the uh, they always told their own people up there that they were doing they were they they were doing all they were doing all the work. I see, but they can admit it now. Uh, so yeah. four uh, years ago, you got the medal. Yeah, now that uh, what's his name uh, Yeltsin get in there and he says, well, we're supposed to do something for the uh, uh, for the Allies that you know. Yeah. Work. So. You got your medal. Got uh, medal. So you came back to Hoosick Falls, and uh, what happened? When, give me a little well, history. Well, when I got to Hoosick Falls, I said I got to do something different, so I went into the plumbing business. And uh, I, I, for, let's see, I, oh, about, oh, quite a many years I stayed in the plumbing business. And See, you got married? And you know, I got how married. How many children did you I have? Seven, seven children. Seven children. Yeah, seven, uh, That's uh, one three, of them. Uh, four, four girls and three boys. And uh, uh, let's see, I'm going to think of something else. I, oh, but then the trustee, I was a, I, I ran for trustee. In the village. Yeah, village. I was that in 72. I see. Yeah, I got there. I was in twice, I guess, that I know of. Oh, great. Yeah. Well, and one with Dick Severson at that time. He yeah, was when mayor. he was mayor. Yeah. 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 Well, I thank you for coming and telling us that story. That's a wonderful story. Well, and uh, I hope it comes out all right. Uh, it'll so. be great. And we thank you very much okay. for coming.